graphs of the sine and cosine functions. A function is called periodic if there is a positive number p such that f at x plus p is equal to f at x. So for example, if we have function that keeps repeating, we have function like this. Okay, that's the per periodic function and the period is the length or the repeated part. So this one is my p. If I take this part, if I take this function, cut it off, cut it off and keep repeating, I can get the whole graph. So if I take this one uh, x, if this one is my value x plus p, this would be x plus p. So the value of those function are right exactly the same. Okay, those two values are the same. That's the definition of the period of the periodic function. A function is even if f of x is equal to minus of x. Even function is symmetric by the x-axis. So function like this is even function. It's symmetric by the x-axis. And if you take one little x, and here would be minus x, then the values are the same, minus x. And this would be the value of x. Okay, and a function is a function is odd, odd. A function is odd a function is odd if f of x is equal to minus f of x. Odd function is symmetric by the origin. So example of odd function is like this. The function is symmetric by the origin. Or another odd function would be like this. Like this. This function is symmetric by the origin. So f of minus x is equal to minus f of x. And now the, we have this sine function. the graph of the sine function. So we need to be able to draw a nice graph of this function. So we draw the coordinate system. We draw the coordinate system. Okay. And now here's my value 1, here's my value minus 1. And on the y-axis, if I measure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on, okay? And on the other side, I measure minus 1, minus 2, and minus, and minus 3, and so on. So we would like to have the value for x or my angle x theta. So the theta is in radians. So first we have uh, radians. We know that pi, pi is roughly 314. So pi is roughly 3 units. 1, 2, 3 is my pi. In other 3 units, 1, 2, 3 would be 2 pi, and so on. In the middle of pi is pi over 2 and the middle would be 3 pi over 2. And on the other side, I need to mark the pi. Pi is roughly 3, 14, 1, 2, 3, so it's minus pi right here, and minus pi over 2. And now I say that sine has S shape. And I will explain this in one minute. 
S shape means that it's gonna to be S. It's it's going to be S. So we have the value zero at zero, at half pi has value one, and pi is zero, and minus thirds is minus one, and then goes to two pi is zero, and it keeps going like this. So we can draw nice curve shape of the sine function. And the same situation goes 0 and pi, so it's, it goes the other way. Okay, That's the function y is equal to sine x. And now the part that keeps repeating, the part that keeps repeating, that's my 1s shape, it's called nothing else but period. is the part that keeps repeating and the height of one bump is called amplitude. Is called amplitude. So for the future, everyone should be able to draw the sine curve. The sine curve has the S shape, and in shortcut, we draw the sine curve like this. We draw the coordinate system. We draw the S shape. Here is my S shape. Okay. At the end of that S shape is 2 pi. In the middle is pi, and then half is half pi. That's, that's the S shape and that's the shortcut of sine function. Everyone should be able to draw the S shape. So you draw the S shape sine function, at the end is 2 pi, in the middle is pi, half pi, and so on. Okay. Now we would like to talk about the properties of that function. So we have properties of that function domain. Domain is the set where the function is on the x-axis, keeps going, keeps going. So domain is all real numbers, or or you can write or minus infinity to infinity. Range is the window on the y-axis where my function is. If I set up range, I clearly see that it's from minus 1 to 1. Now the sine function is periodic with period 2 pi. That's the length of one that keeps repeating. If you cut and you keep pasting, then you get the whole sine function. 2 pi is nothing else but 360 degree. So in other words, sine of x plus the period is equal to sine x. That comes from the definition of periodic function. And then we have then we have that the function is odd. The function is odd is symmetric by the x act by the origin, and by the definition of odd function is sine minus x is equal to minus sine x. And then we have E, that the amplitude, the number absolute value of A is called the amplitude of this graph Y is equal to A times sine X. So the amplitude is the height of one bump. And if you have number right here, that would be the vertical stretch. The graph would have stretched, the graph would have stretched. So that's why it's the positive number called right here. So amplitude for the sine curve, amplitude is 1 for the sine curve. OK. 
Okay. Amplitude is the absolute value of that. So now from the graph we can read couple values, values, find the values, find the values of the function, and we have a sine pi, sine pi. I look at sine pi, how high is my function at zero level. So sine pi, the value is zero. And then b sine pi over 2. I check pi over 2, where is my value of the function is 1. c sine minus 180 degree. So minus 180 degree, minus 180, 180 is pi minus 180 degree is, is 0. Okay, and then we have sine 270 degree. 270 degree, this one is 180 if we want to in degrees, so that would be pi is 180, half pi is 90, 2 pi is 360, and in the middle, 180 plus 90 is 270. So 270 degree is this value, and the value is at minus 1. Read the value from the graph. And then we have sine minus 4 pi, for example. We can use the property that the function is odd, so that means that sine minus 4 pi minus x, sorry, sine minus x is minus sine x. So sine minus 4 pi is minus sine 4 pi. So if sine at 2 pi is 0, if we keep continue, it will be 4 pi. So the value is 0. So this would be minus 0, which is 0. Those uh, uh, values, values at pi, values at pi, half pi, and and so on, are called quadrato angles. Quadrato angles, because if we draw the, uh, if we draw the coordinate system, and if I keep opening, so this value is 90, this value is 180, or in other words, pi, pi over two, and so on. So those quadrato angle, the the angle lands on the quadrant, quadrato angle, and then on this one, on the coordinate system, on the axis, x-axis, y-axis. Those values we, we read from the graph. We read from the graph. And now we have cosine function. cosine function the same way if we would like to draw the graph if we would like to draw the graph okay so this is one this is minus one and the value one two three four five six and so on one two three and so on so three of those is 1 is pi, pi is 314, and then we have 2 pi. In the middle is pi over 2. This would be 3 quarters pi, and then 1, 2, 3, it would be minus uh, pi and minus half pi. Okay, and cos has the value, I call it v-shape, so we start from the 1 and we go through those points. And keep going so the cos curve goes roughly like this okay that's the V the V shape and it goes opposite way like this too okay so this one is y is equal to cos theta cos x 
and of course this the length of one of those ones of one part is called period that's the length that's from 0 to 2 pi if you cut the graph and keep repeating repeating pasting you get the whole graph and the length the height of the one bump is amplitude Then we have properties of the sine fun cosine function. We have property of the cosine function. Domain, domain is the window on the x-axis where my function is. The function keeps going. My window keeps opening. So domain is all real numbers. Or you can say from minus infinity to infinity. And then range. Then range is. Its range is on the window on the y-axis. So my graph is between those two. So when I read them, it's between minus one and one. And then cosine function is periodic, with period with period of two pi. So this is three sixty degree. That means that cos of x plus 2 pi is cos x. That's the period. Period is the length of one part that you can cut it and keep repeating. Okay? And then cosine function is even. That's the only one function that is even. That means cos minus x is equal to cos x plus cos x. And the same we have for the amplitude that the number y absolute value is called the amplitude of the function y is equal to a times cos x. And as before, we have find the exact values find the values find the values and we have a we have cos minus 180 degree cos minus 180 180 is pi so 180 is right here and cos value if you look at this point cos value is minus 1 so this one is minus 1 then we have cos v cos 0 cos 0 the value is 1 then we have cos oh see we have cos pi over 2 cos pi over 2 the value is 0 and then we have cos cd we have cos uh, cos pi cos pi if I check cos pi the value is minus 1 CDE we have cos 2 pi cos 2 pi the value is 1 Now we have example, another example, determine the amplitude and period of each function, graph the function. So we have a, y is equal to 5 cos 2x. So we can use transformations, we can use transformations. Number one, if I would like to graph it, I graph y is equal to cos to x cos x and the graph we set has the v-shape so the graph is like this 2 pi in the middle is pi 
okay then what we would do number two y is equal to five cos x five i would expand i would expand this function vertical expansion i will stretch this function five times i will stretch this function five times Here would be 2 pi, so this affects this affects my amplitude would be 5. And number 3, I would write this 5 cos 2x. This one is vertical, uh, horizontal compression. We would squeeze this graph twice. So now instead of pi, 2 pi, my period will be affected twice. So my period is v shape will be more compressive up to pi okay so this affects the period period is pi and the amplitude is 5 and they ask us graph the function so we already know the graph Somewhere we have pi. So uh, first, I'm gonna draw the V shape. Okay, up to two pi. So that's my graph number one, using transformation. Then I'm gonna expand this five times. So one times five goes to five. Zero is zero. Minus one goes to minus five. 0 is 0 and 1 goes to 5 so the graph goes right here that's graph number 2 and then I compress this I compress this graph I compress this graph squeeze it uh, horizontally so I'm getting So I'm getting the graph. I'm getting the graph like this, that I compress everything, squeeze it. So this point is compressed twice. It's right here. This co point is compressed twice. So it's it's it ba basically if that was two pi divided by two is pi, pi divided by two is minus pi. So this one goes to one half. It's pi pi over 2. Pi divided by 2 is pi over 2. This one was 3 halves. At go it's gonna be oh half pi. Let's do this one. Half pi divided by 2 is quarter and this one is a quarter. So that's my final answer graph. So this one is my three graph number 3. We have y is equal to minus 2 sine x plus 1. So using transformations, I would start with the graph y is equal to sine x. The graph has s shape. S shape means like this. Here is 2 pi, in the middle is pi. Then I would use the 2. So we have y is equal to sine x. So the graph is expanded. The graph is expanded. You stretch the graph, you stretch the graph two times vertically. So the graph is expanded. Oh, it's the, the cosine graph, I'm sorry. The graph is expanded. It's like this, twice. So now we have, this one is two. So now we have the amplitude is two. So the amplitude is two. And number three, we have y is equal to minus two sine x. 
So the minus is the reflection reflected by the uh, x-axis. So the graph is reflected down. So it's going to be right here. Okay, reflection. Reflect by the x-axis. And then we have 4. We have y is equal to minus 2 sine x. And then we have plus 1. Plus 1 is the graph move it one unit up. But as you notice, uh, period it didn't change. So the amplitude, amplitude we got once we have vertical stretch, but the period didn't change. So, so the period is still too pi. And now if we would like to graph this function, we would have here is 1 1 somewhere pi somewhere 2 pi so we have first we have sine s shape we need to have half pi and half pi okay and then I'm stretching so this one is the graph number one then I'm stretching this twice so it goes this part goes to 0 this goes to minus 2 and 0. So then the, sec the graph goes like this. So this is graph number 2. Then we have minus. So I'm going to flip this over was up. Now it's going to be down. This one's down. It's going to be up. Up. So that's graph number 3. And now I'm moving this graph one unit up. One unit up. So this point goes one up. This, this point goes one up. The blue graph we are moving. This point goes one up. This point goes one up. And this point goes one up. So the red graph is my final answer. Y is equal to minus 2 sine x plus 1. Now we have example 4. Given the graph, find the equation of the function. And we have graph like this. This one is 2 pi, and this one is minus 5, and this one is 5. Okay, so first identify the shape. The shape is V shape. From 0 to 2 pi, we have V shape. V shape is cos function. Y is equal to cos. Period is didn't change. Period is 2 pi, so the function didn't change. So the, we don't have horizontal stretch. But the, the amplitude, the amplitude is 5. The amplitude is 5 instead of 1. So the graph was stretched five times. So that's why we need to put five in front. And B. The graph looks like this. The graph looks like this. Here is eight pi. Here is four pi. And here is 4, here is minus 4. Okay, so first identify the shape. The shape is S shape. So we start with the graph sine x. Sine x. Now, my period has changed. 
my period normal period is 2 pi now we have 8, eight pi so from 2 to 8 it was multiplied times 4 right so we have that sine 4x the sine y is equal to sine it should be 4x 4x because it was uh, it was expanded four times so it should be one fourth one fourth one fourth and then it was expanded its vertical stretch is four so we have four so the graph is y is equal to four sine one fourth x one fourth because when it was two we compress it twice one fourth we expand it four times it's expanded four times And that's it for this section.